Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about why DNNA is worth playing in 2021. Uh, I have with me here uh, Hakai, a guild leader of Chai. Yep. And we're just going to kind of bounce off um, some stuff. So we're going to go over um, uh, why the game's worth playing first, right? And then we'll, we'll talk about some new stuff for returning players, that, uh, so stuff you might have missed or might want to see that are new to the game and then we'll talk about stuff that's coming soon to look forward to and then some recommendations for new players we have a, a big new player patch coming out this wednesday so i'll be making a video after that and also redoing my uh beginner guide um so i'm not gonna go too in depth on that but we'll, we'll touch on it at the end so uh starting off i mean i think the main draw for most players is the, the combat system and the classes um it just like Dragon S just has a feel like no other game and the classes feel really unique from each other and they kind of like encapsulate like what they're supposed to be. I think DN does a really good job at that and that's kind of the draw that keeps everyone playing the game despite all the faults that it does have. Um, I don't know, Hakai, you mostly just play Glad, right? Um, yeah, just recently started uh, appearing in Avalanche. Yeah, like what, what do you like so much about like the Glad play style? Um, I like, I want to say I just like all the slashing. <laughs> <laughs> True. Is for me, honestly, at first I felt like there was not much to like, like the, the class doesn't really have great AOE or anything, but has good damage. And since the game is mostly focused around like five making bosses and jump, at least toward the end, it's, it's pretty good for uh, that kind of content too. Yeah, so like I'm a player who finds myself playing like a lot of different classes, um, and like I'll I'll find classes that I really like, and uh, I I feel like there's more classes that I want to play than that I have time to play. <laughs> but uh, it I think it's really good. Like some players just find that one class that they really like, and then they're just sold on that class, and they don't feel the need to play anything else. And um, whichever way you want to play, it's just it's it's really good at giving you what you're looking for. Um, and then, yeah, you mentioned, like, uh, like the raids. Um, the game is very focused on, like, raid and team-based content. You're not going to get very far if you're not running with a team. If you have your own group of friends, like, that's great. You can, like, progress together. But um, you, you, you're really going to be playing a lot with the same groups of people, uh, especially on DNNA, where it's a very tight community. So you're going to want to find a group of people to play with uh, and build up, uh, build up your characters with uh, as soon as possible. Indeed, or else you'll probably get bored of the game or feel like it's pretty difficult. Yeah, like I know a lot of people like to lone wolf it, and you can lone wolf it. You can go around like subbing teams and whatever, but of course it's not going to be very consistent. Um, so like it, it's a very team focused game. You're going to be spending a lot of time with the with the small community that does exist. Um, do do do, and yeah, I mean, despite how small the game is, like it's it it the run of the reasons that it's still really good and just keeps getting constant updates is because it's very big elsewhere right so like the c server is bigger and then in korea or whatever other servers they have it, it still gets um like proper uh proper updates and then we just get that localized and like packaged over to us so even though um they run the game on a very low budget um they're still getting premium updates all the time and like huge patches every month just because like it, we're getting the content from the other servers. Um, there's all there's almost always something that we're looking forward to. I find with the upcoming patches, even if it's not like the next month, like usually within a couple months, there's something big we're looking forward to. Yeah, that's honestly like I never realized that either. But yeah, it's like I don't I don't want to say the game starts doesn't start to feel stale, but. After a while, you just just start to want to see the kind of the newer stuff coming. Yeah, like the like a lot of the old nests and things have become regular content. They're kind of just like dungeons. So it's really the raids and the new nests that keep everything going. And we have like a new nest coming out this patch, and um, we had a new raid recently, and then we had a like an up updated version of another raid recently. And like without that, I think the game wouldn't have lasted for the like decade that it has. Um. And then, yeah, I mean, there, there's this, 
really interesting like aspect of the game that I also wanted to touch on. So like this is a game that's obviously like it's a pay to win game, right? Like the people who spend money are going to top the leaderboards and we have people who spend money in excess, right? And that is really what keeps the game going as well, right? Fund the fund the company, but um <laughs> The, the interesting thing is that the company is very negligent with um, uh, bots and, like, cash trading and the stuff that's against TOS uh, on most, um, most other games. And so what happens is, for whatever reason, Dragon Nest NA has established this community where just, like, there, there are items you can only purchase with real money. So even if you're a free-to-play player, you may, you may buy and sell things with real money. Uh, you don't necessarily have to spend a dime of your own money, right? If you sell an item in game for money, you can use that money then to buy stuff. You haven't spent any of your money, you're still free to play, but cash transactions just like have become a norm for some of the very high end items that have a huge price tag. And what that means is that um, like for free to play players, you can technically make money playing the game, which is something that doesn't exist in a lot of games. It's it's super wild that you can do that. It's It's really weird. I don't know. What's yeah. What's your take on it? I, I mean, I feel like it definitely is something that's unique. It's kind of weird in a way. Yeah, it's it's strange how normalized it is in this community. Yeah. And like for a lot of people, like you'll find that like if you're getting into the game and you are spending money on the game, you're not really going to be making money on the game. But the possibility is there that if you just set up some characters and you want to spend a few hours farming some nests and like doing your weekly stuff, and then whenever you get a big drop, you just sell it. I don't know. It's just free money. It's nice. Um, I kind of envy that play style because I'm kind of I've kind of wailed past that point, but. Um... <laughs> Um, you know, the, the options there, and that's, that's a really interesting way of playing if that, that suits your fancy. Uh, although you still have to like the game. I think, like, the, the game can get a little yeah, monotonous if you, if you don't enjoy the, the combat. So if, like, if you're here just to make money and you don't enjoy the game, you're not going to get very far, and you probably won't get to the point of making money. But if you do like the game, you know, you can double dip. It's nice. Um... And then also, let's see, we wanted to touch up on, uh, we, sorry, we have a little bingo card here of topics we want to cover. So if it feels a little rushed or we're kind of like going through it, that's why. Um, but uh, yeah, difficulty scaling uh, in the game is really interesting. So the way it used to be, right, is that like nests were kind of like a certain difficulty and you would just, you would just run it at whatever difficulty they were. Um, and, you know, you would try and run the hardest one to get the best drops. Now it's kind of like you can play at your own pace. Like the difficulty scales from one to like eighteen, and you know the, you're gonna get better rewards from some things at a certain threshold. But once you're over that certain threshold for most things, you can just kind of play it. Like you can either like do super fast nests where you like one shot the bosses if that's your play style, or you can like do really long ones that are like you know you gotta you gotta kite around and then you're gonna get rewarded for you know doing a higher higher lab. And for some things, it doesn't matter as much, so you can just do whatever you want. You can do it fast, you can do it do it slow. You can play at your own pace, and that's really cool. That's definitely one thing that I really like that they implemented, especially because as someone who at the time, like, before they introduced that, I didn't really have the time or the gear to play the, the higher or the harder nest, you know? So I felt like if I wasn't really getting carried, I was... I was kind of stuck where I was. Yeah, I, I, I specifically remember, like, nests were one of those things that was, like, really hard, and you used to... You used to have to, like, check people's, like, titles to see if they cleared it, and they know the max. and uh, I think the game is a lot more forgiving now, um, because, like, as long as you have revives, you can revive, and, like, you can, you can play with some undergeared players, and it's not a big deal. If they, if they goof a mech, you can just res for regular content, and then raids are still, you know... They're, they still have, like, that hardcore aspect where you can wipe, but in a lot of raids, like, you, you can full revive at certain points or, like, after certain stages. Um, and so it, it's just a, a little more forgiving, but still very challenging, and I think they've done a yeah. good job with that. Um, and then way back when, right, like, the whole thing was you wanted to get your weapons above above plus 10, or even just two plus 10, like, plus 10 was the number to be at for your gear, 
Um, and I would say that nowadays it's a lot easier to plus 10 your gear and get to that starting point, but then it's a lot harder to get your gear past plus 10. And this makes the gear like meaningful and valuable because it's it's very um, it's very hard to acquire like plus 11, 12, 13 compared to a plus 10. But it lets everyone get to those starting points easily, and so you can you can get into it uh, without too much difficulty once you get your like base items, which uh, I think are at a re like an all time low affordability right now, especially with the beginner guide coming out. It like the entry point is really nice. Yes. I think we're finally yeah, going to hit that. that with this patch on Wednesday. Uh, I think that's most of like the reasons I had for like you know why why like the game is worth playing. I don't know if you wanted to add anything, Hakai, like things that like really keep you playing the game, um, systems that you really like. Before we move on, uh, yeah, I say I, I wanted to say raids are like a lot more forgiving than they used to be because. The old school raids, like once you died, you were pretty much dead for the whole raid. Raids could be up to like an hour or more, especially with dead people. So just being able to arrive, like even if you're reviving after one boss or after every boss, it, it I feel like it makes raids shorter for one and just more doable. That's I mean, it, it, it's yeah, and it's it's not like it really takes the difficulty out of it. Cause if you if you still wipe or something on on the higher raids, like it's still a wipe. But like, yeah. you know, if you lose two guys at the start, you're not sitting there for ten times as long trying to scuff your way through the rest of the raid. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and I think I think I think it is definitely more forgiving, and I think that's generally a good thing. Um, because they did it without taking out too much of the challenge for sure. Exactly. Um. Right, so um, I think that's it for like reasons you might want to play the game. Uh, but like, there might be some more that you find here. We're gonna move on to like new things for returning players, and I think the first one is like new classes. So I, I think most people, because most people in DN are returning players, um, because they don't advertise, right? And I really wish they would. No. Um, mo most people, I think, stopped in you know some range of cap that like they they felt was inadequate or whatever maybe 50 60 70 whatever and then you know a lot of people are like coming back kind of recently um with all the like beginner changes that are coming up and uh since that point i think the main new classes that have come out are uh, vandar lancia and machina and i think of the three of them um lancia is probably the most played um and Vandar is probably the best one. Uh, Vandar is like a like a starter class that you can pick, where it like it gives you like a, a jump start to like level ninety. The main quest is much shorter because I think a lot of people find that the main quest is too long these days. Um, and I think that issue is a little bit better now because uh, like for alts at least you can skip through it because you can get the goddess gear elsewhere with the upcoming patch. But the um, you still need to run through it once on both a Vandar and a regular character for the stat titles. And yeah, Vandar is just a really good starting class. Um, it was the class that like really kept me back into the game. Like once uh, once I came back, I started playing like a, a gladiator. Uh, I played I used to play both a gladiator and a moon lord, and I, I was swapping between them and I'm like, ah, I don't know if I really like the way that these classes play anymore, and Vandar is what really did it for me, the new duelist. Especially after they reworked it in January. Duelist is a lot of fun. Yeah, it's also a class that's in high demand. I might add, so you know, it's a great class to start off of. I, I highly recommend checking it out. Um, Lancia's, despite being a very popular class, are still you know pretty desirable. You've got like Avalanche has the ice stacks, uh, and then um, most people i would say i don't want to say most people but there, there's a higher amount of people who play like warriors on the server so you know just having that like different buff uh, makes your character more desirable in parties and especially with machina machina shares a party buff with sork and uh, that's generally a rarer pick as well so those classes are just very desirable so if you're looking to just check them out i think uh uh, I personally have played all three of these new classes uh, on at least one specialization, and um, I, I gotta say I'm very happy with the Buster and the Plague that I have. Um, 
and I'm very happy with the duelists that I have. I think they're all I think they're all really good classes, and there's there's you know different play styles for each of them in the different specs, and they did a good job of diversifying it so people can try those out. Um. And I, I mentioned Plague, uh, let's move on to like transformation classes, that's another thing that's new. Have you played a transform class, Akai? Yeah, I played, I played uh, Demon, no, Dark Avenger. When right, the Warrior started. one, yep, yep. Like, what, what, what cap was that, like 80? Uh, it, it must have been like 70, because I remember with my friend, we, we had this huge plan. We were going to make a bunch of Dark Avenger accounts, because they said it was a limited time class. And then we were going to like sell the accounts uh, once they took it away, and then they never took it away, and we stopped playing the game, and uh, that never happened. Somewhere in Limbo, there were like 50 plus Dark Avenger accounts that we made. <laughs> <laughs> And they probably don't exist anymore because of the company swap, but uh, <laughs> um, yeah, that was that was the thing. Uh, I've played a good few Transform classes now. I've played Heretic, I've played Plague, I've played Dark Avenger, I've played Raymac. Um, and basically they're just like, they're classes that you can't class change between the regular versions of them. Uh, and they're... Um, they basically have a transformation, uh, that you can turn on and off. So if you, if you like it, it's like a free costume, I guess. And if you don't like it, you can turn it off, use your own costume. And yeah, I think they're, they're generally, when they came out, they were supposed to be like a little more overtuned than the other classes. Now they're just kind of extra classes. Um, yeah. and, uh, the, the idea is they're supposed to be some type of transformative to them so that they're like, they're different when they, uh, when they transform. Some classes are, some of the transform classes, I think do a really good job at this. Like, uh, Ray Mech feels very different when it's transformed than when it's not transformed. But generally speaking for these classes, you're going to be transformed, uh, most of the time, or in the case of Ray Mech, not transformed most of the time. And, um, it just feels like a regular class and it's just, it's a bunch of other new classes that you probably haven't played before that you might want to check out. They're all pretty cool. Um, they're usually a little edgier than the regular classes. Yeah, like, uh, <laughs> Dark Avengers definitely got the edgy look down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, most of them are called dark classes because they're dark themed. I, I, I'm trying to think if there's any of them that aren't dark based like i know I, I think hunter. yeah silver hunter is light based literally the opposite um that's a that's another class that's new that i think a lot of archer players may enjoy playing you get ridiculous air time with that class you're basically just playing in the air you won't feel it while you're leveling though so that might be like a, an off put to some players but once you once you get past that main quest and dragon nest has always been like that it's like once you get past that main quest once you get your stuff set up it feels great um Let's see, new content, new nests and raids. Uh, let's see, I mean, you know, for people who left in like 60, 70 cap, they, they saw Desert, they saw Black Dragon. There were some other new raids after that, like Red and Ice Dragon that we don't currently have in the game. They did like a fresh reset on a lot of things. So we'll probably get those re-added later um, in some capacity, maybe. Um, but since then, we've gotten Gust Dragon, we've gotten Forest Dragon, and we've gotten uh, now Treasure Nest. And then we've gotten a couple new uh nests uh granom daedalus if you didn't play like 80 cap and then uh muertos balkov and whatever the next one of those that we get is uh are all gonna be new nests that you can check out and uh i really like what they've done with balkov and muertos where the um uh because nests have become like regular content they've brought back the sense of like weekly nesting with like a team uh and that's what balkov and muertos is and that feels really good they're very mechanic heavy nests too. Oh, yeah. Definitely gonna be interesting to see. Uh, how how did you like Balkov nest, guy? Okay? Not to like Balkov... cut you off there, but <laughs> oh, no, I just, uh, Balkov was interesting for sure. It was at first, um, well, you kind of showed or told me what to look for and things like that, how to how to not just get instantly clapped when I walked in. But it was still it was still challenging for one. I think I did it on a floor below what I usually do it on, and I was still yeah. They hard. they they kind of upscaled it a little bit for sure. You generally want to run one one under. That's yeah. uh, I like that they they like they made it a little bit sturdier so that you're not just nuking through everything, which is kind of a problem when you get ridiculous number scaling like the game has now. Um, that's yeah. another thing that's new. You, you, your number is gonna be big. Uh, you ain't gonna be. <laughs> 
I like I remember people trying to coop for ridiculously large numbers and now it's just like just pretend every class has a coop and uh all your numbers are ridiculously large <laughs> but it's kind of fun you know I, I kind of like I wasn't I wasn't sure about it at the beginning but I don't know what's wrong with having really big numbers it's fun I like seeing them all on my screen <laughs> it feels good <laughs> Uh, once, once the boss gets to like 10% everybody's like alright get ready to go to swing yeah and I, I feel like um, with the, the new jade skills which modify your skills and usually they give you one skill that's way stronger than your others and it feels really good to press that button um, it kind of overshadowed all your other skills and very slowly and I do say very slowly because it takes a long time to get to this point but we're kind of moving away from that um, they're implementing new systems that are evening out the damage spread a little bit so that your your other skills feel a little more meaningful again. Um, but you still have that nice, really strong button press that uh, feels really good. Yeah, um, as far as time, it definitely felt like the only... Like, you could just go through pressing the one skill. That... I mean, that's how I literally play the game for some of my characters, so I'm gonna be honest. Um, they 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 they're working on it and they've they've got some good systems in place to fix it but it, it the cutoff for those systems i will say is very high uh but you know as as we get this new entry level stuff um you're not going to feel that as much anymore and um i think as the gap closes between having to enhance your jade and being able to do high content uh, you're going to feel that as a new player even less because when you're a new player you, you don't really feel that very much until you start actually getting into it and enhancing your jade really high uh but the nice part about it is like it like that that's that's your hard effort paying off like every enhance on that jade for your jade skill is like something you worked really hard on and you're gonna feel that damage when you press that button and that feels good yes. um I'm still working on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it's 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 big i'm still working on that on most of my characters too um and speaking of big buttons, hero skill. Hero skill is new. Um, I don't know. Do you, how do you like your hero skill on Glad? I don't think I've actually used the Glad hero skill. It takes a while to charge, honestly. But I feel like I'm not sure if I'm doing my rotation wrong or if I just forget to do sometimes, especially like above fifty percent. Right. But yeah. Like at minimum, it takes. I think without the cooldown play for two, it takes like two and a half minutes. Yeah, I it's think assuming uh, you coup every time it's up. I think that's really valid. Like that that was my main problem with the skills is that they do take a really long time to charge and that's less of an issue on some classes. Some classes can get them up a little faster, but generally speaking, yeah, they take a really time, long time to charge, but they do feel really yeah. good when you hit that button for the most that part. True. I think there are classes <clears throat> Blade Dancer <clears throat> And some others that um, it, it, it feels like the worst thing ever and you just don't even want to push the button. Um, <laughs> and, you know, it, it needs some work, I think. But for for the most part, they do a really good job of making the hero skills feel really good. Uh, they, they're kind of things where you have to pick and choose when you use them, and I like that. Um, they're good for DPS checks and raid. They're, they're things you want to press deterministically, not just because it's a big damage skill. And I, I find it amazing that they can print a skill with, like, 250,000 percent damage and there's times when you don't want to press that button because of mechanics <laughs> yeah no you definitely especially like because they can still be interrupted and things like that that's probably the most painful yeah and i think they they did increase the super armor on a lot of them and some of them you're standing still for the whole time and it still feels really bad but they have big aoe they improve the super armor on most of them and some of them are faster than others and do feel better than others um and the you know they allow you to do things you can't otherwise do with your class so you generally want to save them for certain things and i think that's kind of cool so it, you know that's something to look forward to it's and it's another skill that you are able to add to your bar so you have more skills that you can press but because you're not pressing it all the time, it avoids the clutter problem of having too many things to press. Um, yes. Let's see. Uh, conversion costumes are new. Uh, I don't know. Did, did you ever play around with the old costume system, Hakai, with the stupid tablets? No. Uh, yeah, let, let me tell you, I did. Um, it was not good. Um, it was bad. I, child me spent a lot of money on that, and child me regretted that uh, greatly. Um, because I never got the tablets on the character I wanted, and I couldn't get good stats on the pretty costumes, and it wasn't good. It was a terrible system. Um, so now, basically, what it is is it's just stat costumes, and they 
generally speaking, I think they take a really long time to farm if you're planning on farming them. Um, but yeah. overall, like uh, costumes was costumes was generally always like a whale system, and as a whale system, it's it's much more reasonable now than it used to be. And you basically you can farm them from dailies. It'll take you months and months, but you can do it. And then uh, we're going to be getting, I think, a way to get some like a huge chunk of them coming up soon from the assassin rework uh, mission box. And uh, I messaged our GM Lauren uh, a little while ago, and she was hinting that the whole system might get some kind of rework um, in terms of like being able to I, I think you're going to be able to enhance them really high so getting like your base pieces for it might get a lot easier which would be good oh, that would be great um but overall the system is i think better than it was and basically yeah you just you, it, they're stack costumes and you can put whatever um like design costume you want to put on it um and then it gets the stats and they've kind of undermined this a little bit and this is something that i'm not not super fond of uh with like stats that leak through the conversion but they've done a good job of keeping it off of most of the spots where that matters um so that right now that's only on like your tail and your decal which generally most people can't see or keep hidden anyways um so you can still have whatever wings you want like showing and then it's um the weapons are going to be getting that soon which is kind of annoying if you have old weapon costumes that you really like but the new I weapon costumes look super sick. Wait, I haven't heard about that. Uh, so do you know about the Frozen Darkness weapon, Sakai? I do not. Uh, so the like black and blue flame flamed weapons, they look really cool. But they have a 2 piece set bonus of 120k flat. Which, I think we're getting to a point where that's kind of a ne surprisingly kind of a negligible amount of flat. Um, I, I say that very cautiously, because I know there's people who are going to be like, Oh, but you're going to be missing like 100k flat, and that's a lot, but... We're getting a lot of flat now, and it's probably going to eventually reach a point where it's not super important if you do want to use your old costumes, but uh, they, they will have a set bonus that leaks through the conversion. But if they keep giving us high-quality costumes that look like that good as, as that new set, and I think you should go check it out later because they're really cool. Um, I, I don't mind it if they all look really good. <laughs> yeah, like as long as they look nice. Yeah, and I mean, at the end of the day, too, like, it's it's more stats that you're able to get, and more stats that you're able to get means that it's easier for you to catch up to the other people playing the big content, and that's that's always a good thing. Um, let's see, Vigor System. Vigor System is new. This system mostly benefits people who really like to alt farm. I don't think it does a whole lot for people who main one character. Do you use Vigor a lot, Hakai? No. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense, right? Like, I think the only time you would really want to use it on if you main one character is if you're doing, like, a plunder or something. Otherwise, it's really for alt farming. Uh, it lets you just burn your fatigue really fast. If you're a guy who can only play once every three days, Vigor is your best friend. It basically, you spend three times the fatigue, you get two times the loot, so it's inherently not very efficient. But it lets you burn no. fatigue like a motherfucker. <laughs> um especially on your alt so you can you can do some very efficient alt farming with it uh and during no bless i guess you you can use it during no bless if you're tomb farming um but yeah if you're not someone who buys fatigue pots and you're not someone who uses your alts you're probably not going to worry too much about it but it's all it's an optional system so it's just something that benefits people it's not something that takes away from anyone just don't fall into that noob trap of just clicking it if you're a new player you, you don't really want it on if you're only playing one character yeah, it's not a, uh, it'd be done for the day long before you want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's the other thing. Like, So there, there's there's like a resin system, right? I'm not going to hide it. There's a fatigue system. If you play Genshin, you're going to be used to that. But uh, it's not limited by your ult alternate characters. So you can just kind of like... If you like playing one class, you can make multiple characters of the same class. If you like playing like a bunch of different classes, it's actually encouraging of that. It, it helps you because... Um, you're not you're not forced to choose whether you spend your time on your main versus your alt. So you can just play both of them because they both have however much fatigue that they're allowed to use. Um, let's see, um, sixty four bit. Um, that was a big thing. Uh, how is pre sixty four bit for you? <laughs> uh, I, not great. I definitely feel. A difference did did you run a lot of ddns before 64-bit 
I think so. How'd you like flour before 64 bit? Oh gosh. <laughs> flour with mean, ice stacks, yeah. Memories. I don't know. I mean, it's something we should have had for a long time, so I don't really want to put it as a huge selling point here, but I mean, that 64-bit was a game saver for sure. Um, it, it really helped. Uh, I know a lot of people really complain about their connection and things. I, I swear to God, it's most of the time, it's not DN. Like, they'll kick you off sometimes, and it's a DC, and it's DN's fault, but, you know, if you're on a good wired connection, I, like, it, it usually you're gonna have a smooth experience nowadays with 64-bit at least that's what i find um Definitely. i don't want to say you need a good setup i know my brother had a huge struggle getting onto 64-bit to begin with and it, he still struggles a lot with his laptop but that's a laptop like if, if he was on and it's he usually doesn't play on a wired connection so like you know, oftentimes people complain about connection issues and i think for the most part it used to be dn's fault and nowadays it's usually not dn's fault um, outside of certain things. Like, I know I have, uh, like, Selena, um, still... She still has to force DC at the beginning of push because uh, she will crash at the end of push every single time if she doesn't, and then lose all her rewards. Um, and... I start doing that. I, it's something that only happens with her, <laughs> and that's a DN thing. Um... But, you know, outside of stuff like that, I think I think the connections... Like, I remember the game used to go down for days at a time due to, like, big bugs that they used to have. And we just couldn't play, and it was awful, and we don't really see that anymore. Although the compensation back then was, you know, nice, but... <laughs> <laughs> All we wanted to do was play the game, really. Yeah. Uh, second Awakening skills, we just got those. Um, that was gonna be in the upcoming section, but we have them now. I think it was a win on some classes and not so much on others, but... Definitely um, a win on Glad. We, lo we love ours. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with almost all of the ones that my characters have. Um, I think overall it was just good. It was just adding more skills that feel really good to press, helps even out your damage spread, um... Yeah, and, and the har the harmony buffs are just free damage, I guess. Like you can save them for DPS checks. It's kind of annoying when you go into a raid and like some new player just taps their harmony and goes on global cooldown, but I mean, yeah. you know, in an in, in an actual raid where it matters, you're not going to run into that issue and it's just a feels good. Um Oh, and then, uh, alright, so we're moving into upcoming. I kind of didn't put this as upcoming, because by the time this video goes out, we're almost basically going to have this. Uh, but the beginner guide rework we're about to get is going to be great. Super pog. Anyone just starting the game, is this is going to be your best friend. It, it just cuts you so much farther ahead. Um, I think it puts you on, like, STG 14 if you finish the beginner's guide stuff. Uh, whereas, like previously i don't know you'd probably finish around stg 10 or 11 and then you'd still have to farm your goddess gear uh which meant like making alts of the same class and they just kind of you still might have to do that for your boots uh if the, there isn't an event on or something and you don't get lucky during your main quest but... speaking of which <laughs> as, as of the time of this this conversation i think there's the uh, board game event coming, right? Yep, that's correct. Yeah, uh, so that's, that's you can like literally it. just pick up your boots. So, yeah. I don't know. I feel like... I feel like... I never want to put gear as a selling point for the game because it's like, well, you can you can always get your gear just because like, they make it a little easier at some point. Like that, that shouldn't really be a selling point for the game because it's easier. But... Yeah. Um, it really was like something that was stop gapping people and that's gone now so that's definitely something to look forward to yeah because honestly like there's a lot of you know, people that you might see that you never see again because <laughs> they probably finish the main quest get to 95 and then like yo this progression is terrible all right so uh uh, so I'm just running running a little short on time, so we're going to speed it up a little bit. I think you'll be able to help a little bit more in this area because it's more speculation, but we're looking at things that are coming up. So, um, third specializations. Um, specifically, warriors getting one. Are you going to class change? I will probably not. <laughs> interesting, I'm, interesting. Might check it out. Though. Might check it out, might make an alt. Yeah. Yeah, it seems pretty cool. The, the what the magic knight or whatever yeah the, um 
Grandmaster and Magic Knight, I think, or something like that. For uh, for Warrior, they're getting third specs. I think Sork is getting third specs, like Necromancer or something else. Um, I know Kali has a video on it. Um, there, there's 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 a few that are coming out, and I assume we can expect some for every class. We're still waiting on the second spec for Vandar, and we're still waiting on the Transform class for Machina. But yeah, I mean, I wasn't expecting that stuff to be coming up at all. I'm very interested yeah, yeah. to see what they do with it. <laughs> Um, um, I just wonder, yeah. like, I just wonder what they're gonna do with uh, if if Machina gets a transform class. I always wonder, like, because I don't know anything about Machina to begin with. Uh, I don't know. It's a little little cat girl class. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll we'll probably have like a dark cat girl. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That that sounds interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. So for people who don't know, the third spec for warrior is gonna be like one of them is gonna be a dual wielding class, so two swords. So you know, I, I, all all you Kirito lovers, you know, have fun. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're constantly getting new costumes and awakened costumes. I don't know if there's any ones you've seen that you're looking forward to. I was looking forward to the frozen darkness weapons. Um, you seen anything coming up that caught your eye? Um, I would have to look again, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do lots of class reworks. The next one being Assassin. I know Vandar class rework really made the class for me. It really fixed everything that was wrong with it. Uh, and then now I'm playing in Artillery, which is another class that actually did have a rework recently. Um, yeah, we're getting the Assassin one coming up. There's going to be a big event around that. So if you're looking to make an Assassin, that's going to be good because it's been kind of an unloved class. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot more reworks to come. Is there anything you want to see specifically reworked? Barbarian. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've wanted, like, because when I first came back into this plot, to this game like a year ago, I was a main barb. And this is actually, uh, my Glad is actually the character that was a bard, but then I changed to, to Glad around, I think a couple of months after Obedient came out, and I was on Obedient team, I didn't know what like, I was doing enough, so I got like some, some Glad stuff together. Yeah, um, I... But honestly, mm -hmm. it was a good decision, because FMJ came out. Yeah, yeah, I, um, I've had the pleasure of playing every warrior class. And yeah, Barb really needs some love. At least Destroyer is still really good as a tank, so it kind of serves its purpose. Moonlord is going to be getting some improvements in the future. Glad's already in a great spot, I think. Yes, sir. And then yeah, Barb. Barb just needs a little bit of love. Um, there is kind of that. There is kind of that thing with the reworks where you know if it changes the Jade that is best in slot, it kind of kind of can be a down for your class uh, if you're already invested in a Jade. So it doesn't really affect new players all that much. So. You know, if the, anything just got reworked recently, like Bowmaster or Vandar, and you want to go check that out, uh, like you're going to be feeling pretty safe uh, investing in those classes because they just, they're, they're going to be pretty locked in on what jades they're using. Um, let's see, they're going to be getting rid of the delivery quest. That doesn't really need a whole topic of conversation. That's just something that's good. Uh, PvP Very rebalancing. Um... Where do you stand on the PvP rebalance stuff, okay? Well, I hate PvP in this game, so I'm just hoping it's good. Yeah, I, I'm oh. not an avid PvPer myself. I have traversed the ladder to Diamond 1 before on my Duelist because it was super overtuned and it was very hard to lose, except against certain matches where I literally couldn't win. So yeah, I mean, we're, we're getting a huge, huge amount of PvP reworks in this upcoming patch, and I don't think it's going to solve all the problems, but it's a great start if they keep patching just like that, and they keep putting out, like, balanced things. I think we will get to a really good spot with it. They're re-adding PvP gear, but it doesn't affect ladders, so uh, people who are avid PvPers ha can care about their gear. That's kind of cool. I, I don't know. They might be torn on that. PvP players are very generally very objective on those kinds of things. So, you know, some people love it, some people won't. But the PvE players don't have to worry about it. They can still do their ladder uh, to get their stuff without having to worry about getting PvP gear. I think that's good. Um, that's about it for upcoming stuff. There's, there's a lot of stuff to look forward to all the time. We're always looking forward to the next patch, I find. Um recommendations for new players we can kind of touch on this again i'll be doing another video uh like after the beginner's guide rework and i'll literally go over my whole guide in the video it's going to be super long and we're going to co cover everything so if you're a new player just watch for that it's going to be super pog help you out a lot but um 
I don't know, uh, a couple things to talk about. Class choice. Um, how do you feel about, like, class choice for new players, Hikai? Um, I feel like maybe they should, I think, sorry. <laughs> I feel like you can pretty much play whoever you want to for the most part. But, like, at least in the beginning. But toward the end game, you'll definitely notice a difference in, in just general strength depending on the class you choose yeah i would i would agree so like I, I i play a heretic which i think is probably one of the most unloved classes in the game um i don't think the rankings is an accurate representation to show right now because they just reset but generally speaking nobody on our server really plays heretic i'm probably the only player who actively mains it and has one geared enough to do all of the content um <laughs> and you know it, it's it's not even per se that the class is super, super bad. Like there are things about the class that are really good, but it, it does need a rework, needs a lot of love. And there are some classes that need those reworks that we are slowly and surely getting. Um, but yeah, for the most part, like I, that character, like I've invested in it and it's still really strong and I can join pretty much anything I want to join on that character. Um, there are definitely classes that are more desirable, specifically, like, you know, in certain groups. I know, Hakai, your guild has a lot of archers, lancias, so you're really looking to get some of those yeah. other class buffs. And we have the opposite problem over here in, in Arc Dragon. We're, we're getting too many warriors and collies, and we're, we're really digging for those duelists, which is crazy because it's such a good class, and I don't know why more people don't play it. It's, it's so good. I'm just wondering what what guild has a sorcerer or cleric problem. Cause yeah, definitely, uh, <laughs> definitely need more could... sorks, especially Elestras. You know, uh, Elestra is in a super good spot right now. They ice stack and they're a crazy good DPS. Um, even with the the Mara nerf is just a nerf to the iframe frame so far, not the damage. So it's still going to be super OP. Sorks in a great spot. So I, d I don't know why more people don't play it. And then, you know, if you're looking to play a cat girl, you know, Machina yeah. <laughs> shares the buff with Sork. So it's really good. Uh, there's, uh, let's see, Buster's a support. Uh, I think Impact or Runa or DPS. Defensio is like a pseudo tank, uh, pseudo healer. It's kind of like a little bit of everything. And, you know, I I don't think I've I've ever met a Machina that I didn't want on one of my teams. It just, they, they fill good spots on your teams. They're always really nice people. And uh, it, it's just a class that is not very played and it really should be played more. Honestly, uh, like I, I did have a Machina years ago. It was like level four. I don't know why I stopped leveling her, but I had to delete her in favor of another character. <laughs> yeah. But I, I've always wanted to just see what they were about at the least. Yeah, and I mean, you, you get rewarded as well for playing characters that are unloved, not just because you can find those spots in raid teams easier, but because um, the, because DNNA is a small community and there are classes that are underplayed, when they do ranking events with top 10 prizes, like the STG event that'll be ending soon, and they come very scarcely, you get heavily rewarded for playing a class that isn't played very much, especially if you're on the, on the higher end of the rankings. Oh, very true. Um... Let's see. Um, I I think I think uh, one of my one of my previous tips that I like to give new players is to leech a lot, um, but not beg for carries. There's there's a way that you can go about leeching, and you know where you you tell people like I have nest gens. Uh, if you're looking to nest spam, and people are happy to take you on nest spams, you know as long as you're not phrasing in a way that's begging, it's very easy to like get those carries early on, get the stuff that you need. But I feel like that's not going to be as big of a thing post beginner's guide, just because people are going to be a lot stronger off the bat and you're not going to need to leech as much early on. Um, that's true. And that's really good. Uh, let's see. Um, I don't like recommending to like spend money as a new player. I find very often people come in, they have no idea what anything is. They just start dropping money thinking it'll get them somewhere. And then they, don't know what they're spending on and they just end up wasting their money so normally i don't recommend um spending money i'm just gonna pop my ui open here for a second show you guys something though uh for because i know there's those people who want to come in they want to play something good and they want to spend a little bit of money to get themselves started um if you're the kind of guy who just wants to do that and you don't really care what class you play and i i caution this because um 
you know, when when you're when you're like I'll play any class, you know, so, sometimes you might pick a class that you really find you don't want to be playing later, but um the, there's these things you can get on your uh, tail decal accessories called cubes, and they're very hard to roll. Uh, I, I can't overstate that enough. They're extremely hard to get on class um, normally. But what you can do is you can you can spend like 50 bucks and like roll one of them and play whatever class that you get for the most part. I think there might be, like if you get one for a healer, like obviously your damage on a healer isn't gonna be very important. Or you can get one that's like maybe the wrong the wrong jade. Uh, but if you roll a verger one on like, and just play whatever class you get, um, you're probably gonna be at a huge advantage over everyone else in that class, just because you have this thing that they probably can't get. Um, so that would be that would be one of my recommendations if you are looking to spend a little bit of money. But again, please don't whale as a new player. Like, you know, st I start off with like a Vandar or something or like a class that you like that's like easy to get into. And then, you know, learn how things work before you spend money. If you spend money and you don't know how things work, you're not going to get anywhere. It's it's just it's bad. This game will eat all of your money if you do that. That's true. Um and then yeah, I mean, pick a good guild. Um you know, like, if you find a guild that isn't going to take you on anything, or they're, you know, they're not they're not able to get you set up to do the content, you're not going to get very far. I think picking a, a guild is, uh, you know, really important. You can, you can make a guild with your friends, and that's cool. Like, if you want to play the game at your own pace and go slow and play with your friends, by all means, please do that. You'll have a great time. Um, but if you're looking to, like, progress in the game, you know, make sure you're joining a guild that's going to help you. And know what the guilds need, like, um, like p picking picking a group of people that you get along with is important. But also, like as I mentioned earlier, like if you make an archer Alancia and you join like Hakai's guild that has a bunch of archer Alancias, it's gonna be hard for them to get you on a raid. And the same thing goes if you make a warrior or a Kali and you join my guild, it's gonna be hard to get you on a raid. And you know that's that's just that's not anyone's fault and it's not because the classes are bad uh it's just because it um, unless you're super op geared and even if you are we just have too many of them and you know we need a little bit of spread uh sure. so that's something to take into consideration when you're picking a guild i think but of course you know if you find a group of players that's helpful and you like them you know just hop in uh and i i do encourage like playing like a couple alts and you know you can focus in on the classes that are like you know a little more desirable while still playing characters that like you really like to play um do you have any other recommendations before we close out hakai for new players um i say <clears throat> Maybe ask, um, like, if you if you really like your class, learn who maybe the top players or the top few players are. Yeah, get help from and, people who yeah, know your class, get, for sure. Get tips. Like, even, I think even when I was, like, lab, geared for lab 14, I, I still had room for improvement. So I asked the top guys, like, yo, what, what do you do in these situations? What's your, your skill rotation? And it actually it still helps me out a lot. Also, the top lads are really cool, dude. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I mean, making friends in high places is always good. You know, you can get those hookups. That's true. <laughs> um, like they just consider you for for rates and stuff, and they need subs. Yeah. So they're like, oh, hey, we just need a body. Can you come? Uh, I think we made decent time on this video for all the topics that we wanted to cover. Just to kind of close out here, uh, I'm just gonna say. Um, Check out the the beginner video that um, I'm going to be putting out probably a little bit after the patch on Wednesday, so probably not till like Thursday, Friday. Um, if you want to see more stuff like this, if you or if you want to see more like like Hakai, or if you want to see like more stuff about like some of the other guilds or the community, um, let me know. Um, I'd be happy to make that kind of content. Uh, and. Um, if you couldn't hear Hakai at all in this video, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll I'll try and fix the sound for next time. I I hope it's fine. It should be fine. I don't see why it wouldn't be fine. But if it's really bad, I I I apologize deeply, and uh, we'll get it fixed. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so uh, I think that's a great place to end it. Uh, thanks for coming, Hakai. Um, this was good. I, I, I liked this. Um, yeah, talk to you later.